And then, um, so that was created. And then we spent the next, the following year, meeting with different architects, um, finding out what their philosophies were as far as planning spaces, um, looking at what they had done with other schools. Um, and then from our wish list and the architect's vision and the administration, um, we were presented with um, designs. So that was sort of like the process. This was a two year process for us. Um, and this was ultimately our wish list. So after visiting the schools and after um, assessing the needs of our institution, um, we decided that we definitely wanted a learn learning commons field that we saw in, in most colleges and universities. As I mentioned, we had one large space, so we wanted a delineated quiet space for our students. Um, we have an open campus, which means that um, students are allowed to be roaming the hallways, going in and out of the school at any time. So um, there's really not many quiet spaces in the school. So there was definitely a need for that sort of space. Of course, group study rooms to accommodate groups, also teachers who would want to meet with students in a quiet space. Again, with collaboration, lots of glass and light, um, not only for the light, but for sight lines, we wanted lots of glass. Um, and that the space had to be flexible um, to accommodate different needs of the school. Um, for a school without an auditorium and things like that, so there's not very many large meeting spaces. The library was often used for that. So when our previous library was used for an event, the entire library was closed off to all the kids for the entire day. So it had to be very flexible. And of course, our biggest wish was to combine the library and tech staff to provide that support. Um, then we focused on making this uh, a reality. So one of the first things that we had to do was in order to make space for our wish list, we did have to go through um, a weeding process of our collection. Uh, we were asked by the administration to reduce our collection by 40%, which I felt was a bit um, overzealous, so we focused on 30%, which for us was actually um, quite doable. Our collection um, needed to be weeded, to be honest. So we had been putting it off, but this was the perfect time. So we just made sure that we made the process very transparent. We communicated with faculty at every step of the way. Um, we were very transparent about what the selection process would be for a book being withdrawn. The system that we'd used was actually this bookmark. Um, so the librarians would um, go through the collection and if they saw a book that could be eligible for withdrawal, we checked off why it would be withdrawn from the collection or at the bottom we would circle if we would replace the book. And then when we were finished with the section, that department was um, invited to come to the library to check the books that we had marked for withdrawal and determine if they were okay with that or if they wanted it. And then we, could, we would withdraw from our collection and give it to them. Um, so it was never that we would only withdraw something because you know, it didn't circulate enough. Circulation statistics, statistics were not part of criteria for um, withdrawing because um, we just didn't, we felt that there were other more important reasons for withdrawal. So again, we expected a lot of backlash from faculty, but it was actually great. We, we involved them in every step of the way, and overall I think you know, they were happy with um, how we did it. So um, we then uh, were tasked with what we were going to do with the books that we did withdraw from the collection, um, and Luckily, uh, this is for us living in DC, we did have access to the World Bank headquarters and we were able to coordinate donations to the World Bank directly. Um, but of course, you know, donation was a huge promise of what we would want to do with the books to begin with, so it was a big part. So that was how we reduced our space for the collection. Um, we also need to then choose furniture. Um, which was fun, and we made sure that we wanted movable furniture, everything on wheels, everything again flexible and um, ready to fit and change in the space. Of course, then there was just the duty of packing up the collection, which um, you know there were movers hired, so we had to supervise packing and unpacking of books, which um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to add a couple of notes on the donating books to the World Bank. 
too. Uh, we actually donated about 29 boxes, but during the reading process, Allison was saying how we were expecting this huge backlash, which is why we had the withdraw slips, and that actually really helped prevent some of the backlash, because the instinctive reaction of a lot of like English teachers, for instance, were like, you're getting rid of 30% of the books? Like, what's going on? And then when they actually saw, they're like, oh yeah, okay, that's fine. You can get rid of this, like, the fifth copy of Huckleberry Finn that's in terrible condition, or like a book that said, like, a book, like a history book that would say, you know, um, learn about the White House, newly updated to include the Reagan administration. And like, <laughs> all right, and then they understood it. Um, but one thing that I didn't, we didn't expect was actually the really interesting interactions we had with students. Mm -hmm. And I, don't, I would almost say, like those of you who are potentially doing this, um, it sort of led for, I mean, we weren't expecting the students to be up in arms, but some of them actually were, um, and those of you who maybe who are in independent schools or a certain breed of independent schools, as you know, the keynote speaker was saying, they can get, they can get very, uh, they can wax lyrical up on this. Um, and we kind of got them on our side a little bit by, we have, we have a conversation about like, oh yeah, I know, like we should get more books. Do you want to help us choose more books for the next library or like choose some new books? And actually, do you want to help some of these books? And we actually had two students come back the next day with um, their laundry baskets and like took away, um, they were like, I would totally love this world, the collection of uh, encyclopedias from 1993. Like, sure. Right? I was like, solve my problem. Yeah. And then they were really happy. Uh, so that worked out really well. Actually, I think it even donated one set. So I don't know when I told you it's Allison to the theater department. I was on maternity leave, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah, as props. So there were, when we gave books away, we had cards like, these are free for the taking. And it was just very, um, yeah. And it was also, I have to say, a really great way to just review your collection. And we found gaps that we've now purchased this year, and it was great to see. It just really gives you a good look at your collection and what you do need and what you can live without. So that was how that happened. Um, and so, again, this is just this, the previous second floor plan, library and tech, just a different view of it. And then the renovations happened over a summer. It had to happen. We did not interrupt school for the renovations because it was the entire second floor. So it started in the beginning of June and ended in at the end of August. Um, so that was our previous floor plan, and this is our new floor plan. So um, library, this is our library. Now it's one big space. We took over the front classrooms that were here. The IT department is here. Um, these are group study rooms, um, and this is the librarian's desk, and then classrooms were shifted throughout. So we have some real pictures, and Yvonne is going to go through what our new library looks like now and how it's been with tech moved in. Sorry, I also got a little carried away with our um, analogy of <laughs> just married. Uh, like the first year, oh, I don't know, I've been married for like oh, six, seven years now, but I feel like that our this year has kind of been like that year, like figuring out like. What do we do? What do they do? What do we like to live together, really? Like, so that's kind of been the theme that we're going to go into next. So this is the new library. Um, you can see now it's a lot of glass and light, which we were really excited about. It's less of that sort of like cinder block uh, walls. And I know for us personally, we still don't have a window in our office, but at least we feel like the sun is getting slightly closer to us. Um, and also, you'll, you actually can't see from here because the walls are up here, and these are actually movable walls. Um, these can actually come down, and then the light all around here, there are uh, windows, which used to be covered by the stacks, because the stacks were all there. Um, and they come down, and there's a lot more light that comes into the light. Can you explain the movable walls a little more? When you say they come down, do they retract <laughs> into a pocket? area or yes. great question they actually and it was really hard for us to visualize that as well it's actually really easy um i will i, can, I guess i could jump um i later wish i'll you know, if you don't mind holding sure. that i'll show sure. it to you um but they actually they on the on the ceiling here you'll see there's like they're actually tracks and they just roll out um kind of like movable shelves i mean they just literally just roll and then they stack into like so the back here, whoops, in the back of the library, there's sort of uh, um, an area in the wall that's cut out that they just stack into. It's not the prettiest, mm -hmm. but it, it works. Yeah, just really also about that, the room actually has um, three different configurations. One giant room, um, one with the panel down, one with the back space, 
um, and then no flannels. So it's very flexible. This one is the one with the yeah. Oh, did this one move? Oh, I don't like this. Maybe there it is. Um, so you can start seeing it a little bit. I got a little. I could probably show you there, but this is where we sit now. You can see here. There's we have a lot more space uh, with flexible tables and chairs. And I'll talk. I'll go into a little bit. I'll show like the pros, the, the benefits we've um, encountered with the renovations, and then we might go into a little bit of the stuff that I want to say, like the stuff we need to improve that we'd like to work on, um, and especially how it relates to tech. So ooh, shells. This is what we got really excited about because. This actually, you know, we were asked to reduce our collection by uh, 30 to 40 percent, but then when we actually put all the books back, um, we had found that we had two whole shelves free still. So the act, they're actually a lot larger than our old bookshelves, but they are not taking up so much sort of real estate for the kids, like the learning common spaces that the kids really wanted. So they're still here. Um, and also, I have to admit, the novelty value of movable shelves has a uh, Brought in a demographic that's been harder to attract in the library. Um, I would say, I think this is my first year, and I'm in our library now for five years, that uh, we had sophomore boys in the fall come in the first week of school into the library. Because usually I feel like I have to drag them kicking and screaming with graphic novels attached. Um, but they were like, ooh, the library. And I had like 10 sophomore boys my second day of school running into the, like, rolling the shelves back and forth. Um, so it was like, sure, get your friends to come and maybe you can also check out a book. Um, so I definitely the novelty value has played a little bit. Uh, that has been fun. Um, and it, it's just been, it's so, I so far, I've quite liked it in terms of the collection too. But we can go on the dark side of it later. Uh, our study rooms that we wanted, they have been unanimously popular um, with the students and actually with teachers as well. Um, we can see we have two smaller rooms. Um, they have one small circular table with three to four chairs for like the smaller groups. Um, I know in the fall, actually a college counseling uh, asked if an English teacher could meet with seniors in there to discuss like their college essays. And so we just put a little sign up that said reserved on Tuesdays. And then they could actually meet there and the kids knew where to go and it was a nice space for them. Um, and then you'll see we also have larger study rooms here um, that have a little bit more light and they've got well, one larger table and eight to 10 chairs. And you can start to see also some of them, I think the intention is for eventually all of them to have these uh, flat screen TVs that actually hook up to Apple. They have Apple TVs um, so that kids, of course, figured it out way before we did and were like hooking up their um, iPhones and projecting it straight on there to like watch movies, etc. That part we got a little like, okay, we got to manage this a little bit, but it was nice to know that te the technology was really easy and intuitive to use and it didn't have all those messy wires. It was, it was kind of, it was kind of great. Actually, I have to, I have to know this part too. You can see here a little, it says Chamber of Secrets. Um, the kids also got very excited because we, for some reason, the, the labeling didn't come very early. So they would be like, which study room are you meeting? Oh no, the one in the back. Oh no, the one in like the other side of the back. And the kids would get really confused. And so we ran a little um, contest that said, help me more study rooms. And then we actually said like from, from literature. And so kids got actually really excited and invested in it. Um, I'm still occasionally waiting to hear people say like, I'll meet you in the 100 acre wood. Um, but so, but it, there are there and the kids are really delighted um, with that. So it was a nice way to sort of really jazz up the, the new library. And then here's our quiet space that we were, uh, that we had wanted in our wish list. And it's lots of light. You can see that it's really been truly quiet. Um, it's funny because you know, I think both Alice and I, like when the library school and I came out, I was like, I don't want to be that shushing librarian. I'm like all about the learning comments. And then I got here and they were like, you need to shush us because we really need the quiet. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll shush you. Um, because you know, in that, in that old library, it was just the one big space. And now they really treasure it. And I almost never have to go in there to shush. Like the kids like will shush each other. Like I'll occasionally go in there and like, Ooh, I'm the one making the most noise in this space. Um, and they like all look up at me. So, and they will really manage it. Like the, the sophomores and the juniors will kick out any freshmen who are making noise and they'll like go to the other part of the library, you know? Um, and so it's been, the kids have really liked it. This is just this little side note, and we'll keep going to it very long, but one of the other issues that we had had in the library was, you know, again, because it was the largest, most multi-purpose space, 
I don't know if anybody else has this issue, but uh, oh, I see some people nodding where they're like, oh, you're like always there. Why don't you let all teachers will ask us to help proctor their tests and the test box, like their tests were sitting in our office and there was issues with security and this assumption that we would always be there to help proctor the test and we were trying to be nice and we're like, we really, I'm not gonna proctor your test during lunch. Um, and so that, it led to sometimes a little bit of a strained relationship between teachers and students. And it was really nice that they heard us and they're like, okay, fine, we can have a separate in the new configuration of the space because they could like break up this large room into these smaller classrooms to sort of take that away from us. So that's just a little side note that seemed very small but has made an immeasurable impact on our lives. Um, this is the other part that we got really excited about, um, the tech, call it Genius Bar. Um, and you can see how it's where it's located. Like this is them and that is us. And so we're really close. And we, we literally yell over to them when we need help. And so it allowed for a lot more serendipitous collaboration. Uh, our tech director who's new and he's like great, like really cool hipstery guy who was like, oh, I'm seeing like lots of old wood, like sort of bar feel. You know, they got very excited. I don't know if we're really feeling that yet. Um, it's still the honeymoon period, I think. But I think the kids have I think they really like the openness of having tech right he, right there and willing to help and able to help. Um, the messiness of being so open though has some teachers and some students saying too, like it's it's not pretty, it's very cluttered. Um, it can be a little bit distracting in terms of information and visuals. Um, but at least sort of the idea that the germs of like us being like being together. Um, I think even being echoed is in the uh, architecture, like the fact that the curvature of the tables are very similar, um, sort of sh showing that we are we are together. Like libraries and tech should be should be together and we should work much better together. Um, sort of which why I also really love what the keynote speaker said too about how we can work much more closely with our tech department. Is there a question? So the Tech Genius Bar is the help desk. Yes. It's not a genius hour area for kids to tinker, or is it both? That's a really, it's so not to tinker so much. I mean, it, I, I think it's really more of a the genius bar like at Apple. It's more of a help desk. Um, and you can see it's sort of um, evolving too, very much. Um, and I'll hope, hopefully we can touch a little bit on our sort of pseudo makerspace. Well, it's really more of an innovation lab. It's not really a makerspace. Um, and so right now it's really been more of a help desk, but there have been more kids involved there. The 3D printer was in the innovation lab. It's migrated to the tech desk because um, they, <laughs> they needed more help with it. Um, and, so, and they needed more management because it broke. So like, let's not put that in the space where all the kids can access without adult supervision. Um, and so it's really been more of a help desk. And you'll see that we had three full-time tech staff that are out there. They don't even have actually any offices. Like they have to just sit out there. Um, so the idea is that they're really out there for the kids, but the idea is you can see the chairs out here too. Are the kids will constantly sit out there and do work, charge their laptops. Um, but but yeah, it's evolving. That would be they don't really tinker. It's really much more of a space to get tech help and work um, on their computer. Speaking of which, so this is again stuff that has slowly come up that we didn't really think we were in the business of providing, but that has sort of evolved. Uh, actually, Alison and I, this is something we did mention to our tech director when he came in because we said last year we started like um, checking out laptop chargers for kids because they'd be like, we really would love these and also maybe headphones because it's not quiet enough. So we asked tech for a bunch of them. We put, we slapped like barcode stickers on them and would um, check those out to kids and we lost all five of our laptop chargers. Like it was just so hard to get back even when we constantly emailed them or tried to find them and they were just like, it, was, it, didn't, it didn't work. It was not sustainable. Um, and so we started, actually it worked out well because people, they still really needed it um, because so much of their work now is online or on a, on a device. And this is actually the work of our student intern and actually one of the tech staff, which I thought was brilliant. This, I mean, he, they created this, they just made this. Um, so, cause they were like, they were letting people use chargers and an iPhone, like an iPhone charger or a laptop chargers, but only at the desk. So they, they literally, we literally like taped them to the desk and be like, you can use them if you sit here um, and charge your phone. And if people, some people, some kids are worried about it, about like, oh, what, someone's gonna take my phone or how do I like make sure it's secure? And they actually said, just the, sort of the, vis the visuals of having like sort of slots 
allow kids to feel a sense of, okay, this is safe, even though it would just, it would have just, it's still sitting on the desk. But it created sort of a sense of, oh, okay, this is secure and I can do this. So you can see that's what they're doing. And he's tinkering in the back there, actually, that's our student intern who's fixing someone's iPhone. I don't know what the legality of that is. I think he's only, he totally just broke into the iPhone and is fixing it, but I'm not asking. Yeah. Yes, that again, okay, the student intern thing was something we had never even really thought about when we came together, because that was not part of our setup last year. But then this year, when, with tech being so much more prevalent, and then with the introduction of our new tech director, and bringing in this idea of the maker space, they actually, um, these, a couple of, of junior boys just got really wanting to get involved in the technology and the 3D printers, especially that that sort of brought them in and then they stayed. I mean, Kenneth, I love him. We're gonna, so sad we're gonna lose him to test mix when he rightfully graduates. Um, but he literally spends every free period sitting there doing his homework, but then like have, helping students and actually a lot of teachers out with their tech needs and actually us as well. Uh, we, we actually collaborate with us to figure out like how to get some um, cell flex or circulation kiosks up on iPads. Um, and so he, he actually told us about the, the airplane mode, because I guess with all the background uh, downloading and stuff and apps. Okay, so I'm getting too excited about Kenneth. Okay, moving on. Um, so speaking of that, computers. So one other piece of the read in the, in the plan was, you know, we, Allison showed you the bank of desktops. Um, we had about 10 desktops in our library, and then we would maybe check out like four or five laptops for kids, because we are not a one-to-one -one school, but there was almost an expectation in almost every classroom that they would at some point use computers. And then, then we started doing teachers where you started doing feedback forms all online. So there was a huge sort of increase in the need for computer access. Um, and so we at first wanted to take those out because we are like, that, that bank of desktops was just not conducive to like this sort of collaborative learning that we were trying to focus on. But then we were like, okay, but those are always in use. There are always kids wanting to use those desktops. So we made sure, so that we, we made sure that voice was heard, and so that was implemented in the design. And you can see here, it's really nice. They maintained the, the, the bank of desktops, I think about eight um, desktops, and it actually is, what's really nice is it overlooks the, the shop for the theater. So you can actually, so it's less like they're facing a cinder block and it's like losing its wall space. They can look into the shop and that's what the giant T-Rex skeleton is up there. Uh, but what was also really neat was um, they gave us a laptop cart and they, uh, our tech director gave us about eight Chromebooks and about 13 old MacBook Pros. So the, the MacBook Pros were, he was gonna buy, a, he bought us about eight new Chromebooks. He said that was easier, much easier to use and I would highly recommend it. Um, and also cheaper to manage. But then he had to collect all, um, I don't know if your schools do this, but in our school, they provide teachers with computers, which is great. Um, but then after, they, they, start, they make you cycle through every three years. So over the third year, you give it back and they'll give you a new laptop, but it technically belongs to the school. So this is sort of like a, that was, this, this, these have been in use by teachers and they were being collected back. And they said, well, they're just sitting here in our office, which has no space because we really have no more office. So they were like, why don't we just do a win-win, give you our old MacBooks. We slapped barcodes on them. We put some signs on like how to circulate with circulation rules. And they have been a hit. They have been incredibly popular with the kids. It's kind of, you know, sometimes, sometimes funny, the kids will complain about like, there's not enough computers in the library. I'm like, we have doubled our amount of computers that we have for you. but. The, but the fact that they're so much more easily maintained has increased that usage and kids are more coming, are using them more. Kids that who never used to come to the library to work on a desktop will want to take a laptop to go in the study room. Or sometimes they'll bring them into their classroom or they'll like go down to the forum um, and use them like they're on the field or outside. Um, and so that's sort of, it really increases sort of the, if you build it, they will come. And that's kind of been, there's been a growth of an expectation. Do you have trouble holding on to your chargers? How do you hold on to your laptop? <laughs> Great question. I know we were a little nervous about that at first. We were almost like, don't give us those 13 MacBook Pros. But I actually think um, we chased them down a lot more and we told them they could only check them out for the period. 
Um, and we, I didn't want to, what do you call I did a lot of public shaming. Like, I got kids to, well, this is the thing. It's like, if you have a laptop checked out, you can't check out another laptop, obvious. So a kid who will come and be like, oh, I know, I left my laptop downstairs. I was like, well, you can't check out anything until that laptop comes back. And then, and because they were so popular and we would run out of laptops sometimes, sometimes kids would come and ask for a laptop and be like, well, they're all checked out right now. These are some of my friends who haven't checked them out and like, who, who haven't returned them. Like maybe they forgot to turn on yesterday. I'm like, go hunt them down and tell them to bring it back. And we've actually, I would almost say we've only really, this is really sad, but we've only lost three so far. We have, <laughs> this is sort of sad, right? We're like, oh, I only lost three computers, and we hope we'll get them back. But we have, so we have about thirty in circulation right now. Yeah. Uh, we also, a student also installed Find My iPhone on all of them, so they start to yes. Yeah. Um, and it can locate it if it's in a student's house, maybe mm -hmm. safe, et cetera. And house. you can lock them down too. There was one kid we did a, they're like, you need to bring it back because you had it for a week. And um, we've, you send your emails and you clearly don't check your email. So our lovely student intern managed to lock it down. And so the next time he opened it, it started blaring. It went a beep, 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 beep. And he came running back. He was like, I opened this up in my math class. I was like, yes, <laughs> giving it back to me right now. So um, the tech that has been a great part. Partnership. We require yeah. kids leave something. Uh, That's smart. A phone, a shoe if they're in the building. A shoe. <laughs> uh, then they get in trouble for not wearing their shoes. Something they That's come back true. for. That's a really good point. Yeah, we should have done that last year. So this year we've been pretty good with it, but I really like that idea. It's helped. It has. It's like, it makes a difference for Yeah, okay. Um, was there another question? Yeah. <gasps> Sorry, okay, getting too excited. Um, the other piece, and I'll try and whiz through this a little bit more. With the printers, we had lots of printing issues, but now that they're right here, it's been much, much better because you see again looking at the proximity. So basically, I do, right? So there's been lots more collaboration and problem solving as we've seen. We're much more open to cross training. Um, tech has been teaching us to do stuff more. We've been telling tech how to do circulation.